So now you have a functionally in the logically verified gate level netlist. So what next? Once you have a functionally and logically verified gate level netlist, that means you have a design. So like uh, in a college time, if I will ask you just to uh, do certain circuit designing. So obviously you can come up with a function. So if I'm saying that, uh, the, that there is a one function and you have to draw a circuit uh, for that particular function. So you can use a truth table and all those things and you can draw a uh, circuit. So that once that circuit is there, uh, if you want to physically design that particular circuit, so you have to do the partitioning. So when I'm saying partitioning, in a lower technology node, it is very important. So when I'm saying lower technology node in the sense, it is like lots and lots of gates are there, lots and lots of logic is there. So if you will not do the partitioning, if you will not do, if you will, if you are not going to divide your design, it is a hell lot of work for you. You cannot finish that particular part. So when I'm saying lower technology node, so basically it is, uh, I'm talking about like 90 nanometer, 180 nanometer, 45 nanometer, 25 nanometer technology node. So, so the point is like, as we are moving toward the lower technology node, partitioning is very important. So partitioning is uh, basically, what is a partitioning? It is basically dividing. If I think I can design each and everything of a mobile, I cannot design those things uh, uh, in a next three year also. But what I can do, I can divide the mobile phone into the different, different sections based on functionality also based on some other things also. So I'm not going to discuss that particular part, like on what are the different bases I'm going to uh, divide, but I can divide it. And what I can do, I can distribute among you. So let us suppose there are 20 candidates right now. So what I can do, I can ask you like, okay, in which area you are good. And you can say like, okay, I'm good in each and everything. And all of you are saying like, okay, I can do anything. So what I'm going to do, I will divide the whole mobile and I will give one, one functionality to all of you. So that is known as a block. So the big design I'm going to dis uh, divide, I will partition and I will say like, okay, these are the different blocks and that particular block, I will give it to you. So that's the something is like uh, once I will get a circuit, then I do the partitioning. Now this partitioning nowadays we are doing the RTL level also. So it's not like only this partitioning we are doing in a physical design. So we are doing the partitioning in physical design also, but as a physical designer, you can say like, okay, why can't do this partitioning at the RTL level itself? So what is the meaning of RTL level? In place of writing a single RTL for a complete design, why can't the RTL designer can write multiple RTLs? Now, if they will write a uh, multiple RTLs, then it can make my life very easy. I'm not supposed to uh, partition the design at this particular stage. So this partitioning is basically, there are certain things, certain partitioning we are doing at the RTL level few partitioning we are doing at this particular level. After the partitioning, the next stage is a chip planning. So now you divided everything. Now you just want to place it in a chip. So when I'm saying the chip as a system specification, 99% of the time we know what will be the final size of my chip. So like as a, like I give an example, like as a, if, if you want to build your house, so definitely, you know, what is the size of your plot? It will not be like, okay, come up with anything. And uh, once everything is done, then I will go and I will just check. Okay. That, that size of plot, I will search and then you can just do that particular thing. So as such the final size, everyone know. Now within that particular size, the, the plot, the plot size, what we have to do, we have to come up the room size. So this chip planning, what we are doing, we are just trying to understand like, okay, the size of the room is this. Now, whether this uh, drawing room supposed to be at the front or it's supposed to be in the right side or the left side, where should be my entrance? Where should be my different exit? Where should be the balcony? Where should be the kitchen? A uh, few people usually talk about the vastu and all those things. So all these things are part of a chip planning. 
So here in a VLSI, what we are going to do, we will talk about in terms of uh, the pin. Okay, the, the there is a uh, ground pin, there is a VDD pin. Okay, so these pins are extreme corner. So when I'm saying the extreme corner, so let's think in this way. So you have it, you have this chip, and you are saying, okay, this is my VDD somehow, and this is my VSS. This is my clock. Now I need my chip, like here it should be the USB port. Here it should be the antenna for uh, transmitting. And uh, here I'm going to receiver. So something like that. So now this particular chip you're going to use somewhere else. So maybe you know like, okay, there are a data bus. So you have all these information as a part of a system specification. Now, what you have to plan, you have to plan the internal structure of your chip. So that is a part of a chip planning, like, okay, the power planning, the chip planning, I'm just uh, uh, talking about the same thing here. So like VDD VSS, so if VDD VSS is here, how I'm going to use it. Now, if USB is here, so internally, if there is a RTL of USB, you, will, you want to place that USB at this particular, that RTL, that particular block here only. Now, if you will place the USB block here, so I think it is a wrong approach. So all those things comes into the part of a chip planning. Like, okay, where, which particular module I'm going to keep and uh, how I, I can utilize the maximum size of my, uh, of my chip size. So this is basically uh, the chip planning. Next stage is a placement. So now you planned your chip, like, okay, these are the different blocks. Like I, I was just saying like, okay, this USB antenna. So these are a few macros basically. So the IP, which uh, uh, Malik Arjun just asked, like if you have already an IP, IP in the sense intellectual property, that means you design certain things and you are saying like, this is my property. Now you can use it as it is. So you cannot change it. So, uh, or uh, if I want to simplify it, you designed a block. So as a uh, nickel, maybe the nickel designed a block and the nickel said like, okay, this is, this is a functionality of my uh, block. Like <clears throat> in the sense, this can do this particular part. Now you can use it anywhere. So like I gave an example of USB. So USB protocol is fixed. Everything is fixed. So you can say like, okay, with uh, this is my USB block. Now you can use it as it is. So those, all those things are the part of a IP or the macros I can say. Point is like, that's the something is a part of a chip planning. Now there will be certain custom logic around those blocks. So when I'm saying the custom logic that is, it is your requirement. So those particular part is a pa those particular thing where you want to keep it. Like uh, you want to do certain operation or the functionality. So where exactly you want to keep it. So that's, that's a part of a placement. So in the placement, you're going to place it accordingly. Then clock tree synthesis. So I'm sure like most of you already know what is a clock. So in our design, we have flip-flop. In our design, we have a combinational logic. All the flip-flops, uh, they have a clock signal. In a clock trace synthesis basically is a building a clock network. We will discuss that particular part. So Juhi, basically what happened like now in the placement, you placed uh, a number of D flip-flops in your design. But those D flip-flop is not connected with the clock signal. In the sense, uh, think in this way, like you have a chip here. This is your clock pin. Now you have all these flip-flop. So how you're going to connect these flip-flop, the clock pin of these flip-flop, how you're going to connect with the clock pin. So for that, you have to make a connection between the clock and uh, clock source clock pin and the flip-flop clock pin. So that particular process, that particular thing, is basically is a part of a clock tree synthesis. So that's a, that's a clock tree uh, synthesis basically. Now after the clock tree synthesis, signal routing. So till now we are just talking about the clock, uh, clock 
than the data signal so that means connecting uh, different uh, gates uh, the input output gates properly and the routing when i'm seeing the routing physical wire so i'm talking about the in terms of the metal one metal two metal three so we are going to route it and then the timing closer so here it looks to you like okay the timing closer at the end but actually the timing closer is a part of each and every stage so in the next uh, the three or the four slide i will discuss uh, the timing closer at that particular uh, stage till now it's all about the designing uh, we'll say design flow now let's talk about in terms of the timing analysis because obviously this is a static timing analysis class so you should know like okay how timing is playing an important role in our front end and back end side like our uh, facebook page youtube channel for more such updates thank you for watching we'll say expert youtube channel be expert by expert best of luck